Hello everybody and welcome once again to North American Elite Wrestling and new New AW Fusion. Uh, this is your host Danny Jackpot. We got eight big matches, four from New AW, four from North American Elite Wrestling here tonight. Right now we have Lariat, NAW original, making his way down the ring. Everybody, it's nice to see you all for Fusion. We had a month hiatus. Things have changed here in the North American League Wrestling locker room and the North New AW locker room. Big things are coming ahead for both these leagues. Right now, we're in the return of Fusion 2. Last time we were on Fusion, we had seen Al Cabrera walk away out of a six-man Hell in a Cell with the Mountain Range Championship. Al Cabrera and Lariat have history with each other. As Al Cabrera preparing to make his way down the ring for his non-title action, I've been told. And he is the new NAW Mountain Range Champion, it's Al Cabrera, but more shockingly than anything, right now I've noticed that Al Cabrera is coming out with Corporate Alien? Corporate Alien? Has Al Cabrera sold out to now the Corporation of North American League Wrestling? Higher up the new NAW, higher up for C? Corporate Alien, we know, has sold out more than any other superstar in CAW history when he joined up with the executive corporate alien, turned his back on the fans, turned his back on everybody. Now he is in the corner of the new AW Mountain Range champion in his second reign, Al Cabrera. Al Cabrera used some questionable tactics to win that. Mountain Range Championship against Amir Barnes. Al Cabrera and Lariat. I would say they are friends, but I don't know what's been going on with Al Cabrera lately. I don't think anyone knows what's going on with Al Cabrera lately. He seems to have been doing his own thing, living up in his own circles now, and now hanging out with Corporate Alien. What's going on here? And don't forget, as I've mentioned before, this is non-title action between Al Cabrera and Lariat. So, winner of this match is going to be really putting a good position for themselves here on the new AW board. Al Cabrera doesn't want to take a loss, being the Mountain Range champion. Lariat would love to get a non-title victory over the champion. The bell's rung. This match has started. Al Cabrera goes behind, takes Lariat down with a nice takedown. Al Cabrera has Lariat in a bad way, throws him down right down to the ring, almost with a little bit of disrespect right there, shown by Al Cabrera. It's a different Al Cabrera than I'm used to, everybody. Al Cabrera with a standing headlock on Lariat. And what's Lariat got planned here? Takes Al Cabrera, runs off the rope. Al Cabrera with a nice drop kick in return, takes down Lariat. Nice to see Lariat made his debut in. NAW, I believe on May 1st, 2009, or May 2nd, 2009, one of NAW's original superstars that's always been an NAW superstar for 11 years now. He's also been a new WWE superstar, Lariat. Former WDF Hardcore Champion is Lariat, a former NAW Intercontinental Champion on the original brand, former NAW World Champion on the original brand. Lariat, Lariat got caught with a nice dropkick in the fans sitting behind this match right now. And... Are we gonna get a clean break between Al Cabrera and Lariat? No, Al Lariat actually slaps Al Cabrera right there. Nice jab by Lariat. Lariat now taking the fight to Al Cabrera. Non-title matchup here to start off Fusion and Lariat looks for the drop kick. Al Cabrera gets nailed but not knocked down. Didn't, neck, didn't nail all of it. Al Cabrera, nice elbow stop. Lariat, wherever he was fighting there. Lariat though, oh nice, just nice throw by Lariat on the Al Cabrera now. Got a shoulder lock going for that trapezius muscle and Al Cabrera's shoulder. Al Cabrera down, Larry is standing over him. These two men know each other very well. Jawbreaker by Al Cabrera. Al Cabrera now. No longer doing the Cabrera Boogaloo. Threw a big neck breaker right there. Al Cabrera no longer doing his Cabrera Boogaloo. Might not see eye to eye anymore, but I hope Al Cabrera is doing well. And his endeavors in CAW is Lariat took him down with a nice sidewalk slam. And a nice elbow drop by Lariat. 
I mean, you can see why I don't see eye to eye with Alex Burger anymore. Man, standing where I'm behind corporate alien, so why it's hard to really be behind a man like Alex Burger. Oh, and that nice backdrop maneuver by Lariat takes down Al Cabrera once again. Lariat. Now Al Cabrera, now the jawbreaker on Lariat once again. Al Cabrera. Two. Three big shots for Lariat. Now what's he gonna plan here for Lariat being in the middle of the ring? And oh my god, just raking the eye does Cabrera. Al Cabrera not caring what these fans think anymore, and that is clear. Again, once again, I mentioned aligning himself with corporate alien. Al Cabrera to that top rope. What's Al Cabrera gonna do here? Diving out of Al Cabrera. Al Cabrera crashes and falls in. A nasty landing for Cabrera, but Cabrera somehow back to his feet. And Al Cabrera now once again gets nailed in the face by Lariat. Lariat here. Lariat is a former NAW original world heavyweight champion for a reason. Al Cabrera still looking to win his very first ever World Heavyweight Tower. Right in that super kick by Al Cabrera. Devastating Al Cabrera with that super kick. A super kick party by Al Cabrera. One, two. And Larry kicks out at two somehow. Impressing us all. But Al Cabrera smartly with, with Corporate Alien in his corner. Stays on the attack of Larry. Al Cabrera now. Mounted punches on the Lariat. I don't think it's gonna fight between these two men. I thought these two were friends. Like I said, I don't think these two see eye to eye anymore. Especially without Corporate Alien being on Lariat's side. And Lariat, what's he gonna do here? Spinny Fisherman! That's almost like a neck breaker suplex by Lariat! Corporate Alien trying to distract the referee! But it's not happening to and Lariat only oh how the bra! Kicks out, Lariat only gets two. Nice kick by Lariat on Al Cabrera, who's down, another stop down and down. Lariat taking his forearm right to the nose of Al Cabrera. That's gotta hurt. Lariat, no, gets reversed. Al Cabrera, the big shot to the midsection. And now tosses Lariat up in the air and drops him on his back. Al Cabrera and Lariat. These two men, like I've mentioned, know each other very well. Al Cabrera could be playing something here, Lariat. And oh, devastating knee to the face by Al Cabrera. That's gotta hurt. Al Cabrera now. What's he going for here? Oh, big neck breaker under the knee. Reverse DDT under the knee. Whatever you want to call it, that hurts the neck. Nice fish drop by Al Cabrera. Shades and Ted Diaz the million dollar man. Oh, and a nice knee to the back by Cabrera. Lariat's in a bad way here. Super kick party once again by Al Cabrera. One, two, three, and Al Cabrera defeats Lariat here tonight. Non-title action, but either way, Al Cabrera just picks up a big win over Lariat, who was game competition here tonight for the Mountain Range Champion, but it was not enough for the Mountain Range Champion, Al Cabrera. And I gotta say, with a big win, and now aligning himself with Corporate Alien, what could this mean for Al Cabrera here in the future of New and AW? He is already the Mountain Range Champion, Al Cabrera. And I can't believe it. This man has changed so much since I've met him, Al Cabrera. Yes, there he is, aligning himself with Corporate Alien, as I've mentioned. Al Cabrera victorious here on Fusion. We have to move on. Big win for Al Cabrera. As here we go, we got a big tag team matchup here. Schedule, Steven Ray and Andrew Leanna making their way down the ring. Steven Ray and Andrew Leanna, one of the most decorated tag teams in the call locker room, you could say. In the North American League Wrestling locker room, the New York locker room, no matter what locker room they are in. Now these two are once again aligned with each other. Steven Ray and Andrew Leanna. I believe these men have worked through their issues that we have seen them have in the past. Once or twice now, these men have had issues. Don't forget, don't forget that final chapter two. Steven Raiden had left Andrew Leanna high and dry. Maybe returning the favor when Leanna done that to him years ago. Maybe making him see how it felt, but now these two men are eye to eye. Or seeing eye to eye, I should say. 
as here comes Stephen Raiden's opponent here tonight, Kid Jack. Kid Jack making his way down the ring, a tag team with the Garbage Punk Kids with Puck. And these two men, there's Puck right there in the background. This is not a tag team match, I'm sorry. And Leanna and Leanna see Mary making their way down the ring. I, I, I was about to say those that tag team now seen eye to eye. But two men that have always been seen eye to eye is the tag team of Kid Jack and Puck. And if I believe right, this match is a qualifying match for the new NAW contract in the case. Kid Jack, Steven Raiden both fighting for a big opportunity here. Let's not forget, Steven Raiden is a former new NAW West Coast World Champion, everybody. West Coast Champion, West Coast World Champion, whatever you want to call it. It's a championship that Steven Raiden has held before. Right, guys, the mind games like Kid Jack, Steven Raiden, and Kid Jack, they have faced off in the past before. These two men know each other very well. Kid Jack, a, a welcoming addition back to the new AW lo lo locker room, also a North American wrestling superstar, is Kid Jack. Puck, his good friend, who's a jester. These two men now away from Shane Force, now known as Kid Jack. Kid Jack, the former ITF World Heavyweight Champion, let's not forget the developmental brand, the very first ever ITF World Heavyweight Champion. Kid Jack is a hell of a single star. He's eliminated me in the North American League Wrestling Turkey Bowl. Battle Royal, let's not forget in 2019, last year on Thanksgiving Day. That was awesome. I love the guy, Kid Jack, a friend of mine. Kid Jack, ooh, big shot to the midsection with that big that big knee right there. Gut buster. And nice. I will drop by Kid Jack on a Steven Rain. Kid Jack picks up Rain, big forearm now. Steven Rain though has Kid Jack, the much smaller man. Both these men, Steven Rain and Kid Jack, can easily be in a cruiserweight division. Actually, Kid Jack himself is a former new NAW cruiserweight champion. A belt that's no longer around, but he has won the championship when it was around. Kid Jack, a former UW Cruiserweight champion also. Steven Raiden, just recently in UWE, was in the Cruiserweight Championship match. The crown the very first ever Cruiserweight champion, but Justice Riley was not victorious in that match. Steven Raiden is the former Universal Champion, though, in UWE. Also, Steven Raiden and Juliana won the new WWE and new WWE Tag Team Championships both four times on occasion. Three times in the one time on the NAW. See that Jake Kid Jack with the Russian Lake Chief only getting two on Steven Ray. Both these teams are great. Steven Ray and Kid Jack, both great wrestlers. Single -week. I gotta say Andrew Land himself would love to be in this matchup. He's also a great singles wrestler. Again, both Andrew Land and Steven Ray have also had problems with each other in the past, but seem to have worked through these issues now in the corner of Steven Ray and Andrew Land. Steven Raiden with a nice leg winger right there too. Kid Jack kind of stretch out the hamstring there. Kid Jack though reverse whatever. Steven Raiden had planned there. Nailing a Russian leg sweep. Kid Jack. And oh, nice sleeper hole drop right there. Kid Jack looking for the cover on Steven Raiden. One, two, and Steven Raiden kicks out at two. Kid Jack with a nice maneuver there. We're only gets two. Kid Jack and Puck would like to remind you if you hear that garbage punk music coming from down the street, that is them playing it, that is that they are in that garage, they are the ones that are keeping you up at night. Blue Thunder Bomb, Steven Raiden with a cover one, two, it only gets two, what a match here on Fusion between these two great singles wrestlers and tag team specialists. Steven Raiden with that plan here, calls himself Mr. Triple Crown and New NAW, let's not forget because he's a former Triple Crown winner in NAW, also along with Dax Star. And wait a second, Puck seems to be distracting Stephen Raiden, the former West Coast champion, being distracted by Puck exactly what Puck would like though, because Kid Jack now once again goes behind with a sweep! Shades of Jeff 
Jerry, everybody, with by Kid Jack and Kid Jack. Wait a second, I didn't announce in front of me. What's he gonna do, Kid Jack? Break it away, they down table. My buddy in front of me. Tearing apart the announce table. I don't know if I should back away here. Kid Jack, this man's known to be uh, not completely stable in the head every time. Steven Rain, though, could make possibly make Kid Jack pay for it. And oh my god, I gotta, gotta get out of here. And I'm standing back. What is Steven Rain got planned here? He has Kid Jack on the top rope. Steven Rain, oh my god! I'm out! Contract in the case has brought Zack Starr to a World Heavyweight Championship. Contract in the case has also brought other superstars to the World Heavyweight Championship in the past. And I can't believe Kid Jack is somehow still fighting this matchup. Give him all credit. Steven Ray catches Kid Jack down. Oh, wait a second. Kid Jack, though. Right out of his way, but catches a rolling elbow by Steven Raven. This could be it. One, two, three. No! No! Kid Jack got his shoulder up. Referee D. Todd says. And Steven Raven with a fireman's carry into a Michi Noku driver. Steven Raven now going to the top rope here. This could be it for Kid Jack. Steven Raven. Go! Instead of going for the 450, just goes to the diving splash. I, I think his man just took his toe on Steven Ray now with a standing moonsault. Steven Ray, athletic, athletic as ever still. Steven Ray now with a snapper taking down Kid Jack. Kid Jack somehow still in this match. And staying headlocked by, I mean, sitting headlocked by Steven Ray kind of choked the life out of Kid Jack. Kid Jack up to one knee. Kid Jack trying to fight back here against Steven Ray. Kid Jack with a few elbows. Fights out of that headlock. Kid Jack now. Goes behind on Steven Ray. With that reverse DDT on to the knee. Shades of a match we had just seen earlier. And oh, a nice knee to the midsection there. And Steven Ray on the Steven Ray by Kid Jack. And that snap mirror now by Kid Jack. And maybe return the favor here with a headlock of his own on the Steven Ray now. Kid Jack, small man with a big bicep right there, choking out Stephen Ray. And, and this is a legal choke, almost someone say at this headlock. And Kid Jack, instead of letting Stephen Ray get out of it, picks him up now with a Russian leg sweep. Stephen Ray is actually in a bad way here. Kid Jack somehow spot, spot out of the situation he was in. That's why I said the former ITF World Heavyweight Champion. Kid Jack. Oh, big shot! Steven Rain's face with the knee. Kid Jack using a whole bunch of knee shots here. Almost really wonder if he's a loaded knee. Calls this the cash in. Shades of Danny Jackpot with the cash in. Call, cash out, but he calls the cash in. One, two, three. Oh, and Steven Rain got his shoulder up by Camp Alleyman. Kicks out of the cash out of the cash in. Both these men kicking out with their shoulders up and very near. You're gonna fit paper in between the Todd's. Referee D. Todd's hand and Matt there. Kid Jack once again a second cash in by Kid Jack. Shades of the great Danny Jack Puck calling his match right now. One, two. Oh my god, and Steven Reddy kicks out again. The former West Coast World Champion, not to cash out Kid Jack in disbelief right now. What will keep Steven Maiden down here in the second match of Fusion? Both these men want to qualify for contract in the case. Both these men ticking out a very near fall situation on multiple occasions now. Just choking out the life of Steven Maiden with that food. Kid Jack, Kid Jack not trying to make it look pretty, he's trying to win a match now at this point. Kid Jack. It's 
going for here. And oh, stomped in the midsection right there. Shakes his own goal to Boston. To Jack. Has Gina Ray in a bad way there. Drops the elbow. Picks him up now. Let's keep Jack going for it here. Puck telling Kid Jack to go for some kind of maneuver. Was he what? what he, oh my God! Telling the toss into the ring post, and that's why these two men weren't ready to tag team. Wait a second, see if they can go behind. Half a full Nelson overhead suplex. I'm gonna call that half a dragon suplex by Stephen Rain. Stephen Rain now going to the top rope here. What a match! Oh, this is the second match of fusion. Oh, that Phoenix Flash, Stephen Rain in one. No puck. Distracting the referee, this surely might have been it for Kid Jack. Referee the Todd has just ejected Kurt from ringside from all the outside interference. Oh my god! Wait a second out of nowhere! Kid Jack just nailed a huge jumping foul line at three! And oh my god! Gets the win here tonight. As soon as Puck gets ejected from ringside, that one distraction, a few distractions, on a Steven rated five puck. Kid Jack defeats a former West Coast champion here in UAW by defeating Steven Raiden. Kid Jack has now qualified for a contract in the case at Fusion Episode 3. And we gotta look at the replays here. Right in front of me, my own friend for 20 years now. Kid Jack gets taken out with a big moonsault through the announce table. And I can't even believe that. At one point in this match, Kid Jack pays tribute to me as we see in the replays. Not one, but two cash-ins by, by Kid Jack on the Steven Ray and he kicked, and he kicked out a both. But, right with a distraction by Puck, the giant jumping frontliner by Kid Jack. Finishes off Steven Raiden. Puck. Kid Puck with Puck in his corner. Kid Jack victorious tonight. Kid Jack qualifies for contract in the case. The former ITF heavyweight champion, the former UAW cruiserweight champion. Kid Jack looking successful here in New UAW. As we move on here, a man who's made his car debut in 2020, Ottawa. And not much is known about the Native American superstar Ottawa. When spoken to, he only asked, what about Ottawa? What about his people? What, 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 what happens to him and his people, he asked. And I don't know if that's something to hate him about, but the way he comes across and the way he acts. Man, covered in mud and paint. He believes he is the Native warrior. A true native warrior he is. Ottawa. I mean, I would hate to be in a guy like Ottawa. Big, big opportunity for Ottawa here on Fusion. Fusion episode two. Series of Fusion volume two, I should call this. This is an episode, this is volume two, I'm gonna say. I haven't seen an episode all night. This is volume two of Fusion. And Ottawa, looking to take on a man who is one of the most devastating athletes in a CIW ring, a, any a ring, Amir uh, Barnes, everybody. Amir uh, Barnes, also a member of the North American Elite Wrestling roster. He has won the North American Elite Wrestling Brawl for all a legitimate MMA competition. So this man is the real deal when it comes down to it. Before he made his name for it, he competed in Egyptian death matches. Scars all over his body from those matches. Amir Barnes here tonight going to take on a, a rookie who many would say is the Native American version of the the pharaohs, the Egyptian pharaoh himself, Ottawa. I mean, yeah, Ottawa, as you would say, is that is the Native American version of Amir Barnes. I've heard the comparison made both these men have that ruthlessness that have the, the, the size and the size almost the same there's a little bit of a weight difference a little bit of a bulkiness difference it's Ottawa's a little bit bulkier than Amir Barnes Amir Barnes a little bit leaner a little bit meaner but the man is still a giant rip machine 
And here we go, Amir Barnes, a former UWE Universal Champion, a former Mountain Range Champion in UWE, Amir Barnes, a former UWE Intercontinental Champion, has won multiple championships all across any league he competed for pretty much. Ottawa, the rookie has a good chance here to knock off a man that many would say would call this an upset if he does, because Amir Barnes is the real deal. And he, but just because Amir Barnes is, doesn't mean Ottawa isn't everybody. This should be a great match, this should be a great matchup here between these two superstars. Big spine buster by Ottawa. I believe Ottawa might even be an injured two star right here. And nice shot to the knee right there. Ottawa's down now, Amir Barnes now, and this match maybe not going exactly how many people would start would expect it to start off. Ottawa's got the offense going on. Amir Barnes here. Three big knees. By Amir Barnes. And oh my god, that 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 hammer lock, that key lock actually, that key lock by by Amir Barnes, but it doesn't work too well the Ottawa's a bigger guy. That was a big guy. Amir Barnes is the Egyptian submission specialist. The Egyptian submission specialist. Very hard to say. You try to say that the guy. And Amir Barnes taking a fight right to Ottawa back with three forearms in the back of Ottawa, almost returning the three knees that he had done in the midsection earlier. And both these men, like I said, very similar but so different. Amir Barnes. Very experienced now, and after so many years in CAW, Ottawa will get that years of experience, I believe, a few over time, but man, he has made a name for himself in the offline leagues, you gotta say. I, never, I haven't seen much of Ottawa until I'm working American League Wrestling, but man, this guy is the real deal also, I gotta say. I hate to say that, that, that one of those matches, I might be saying that, that phrase a lot. We're gonna get out of that as Ottawa goes for a suplex here. Bear Barnes with a knee, though, reverses the suplex. Devastating knee to the skull, on top of the skull of Ottawa, top of his head. A big back elbow by Ottawa, and now Bear Barnes here. And Ottawa now has Bear Barnes up in that fireman's scary position, but Amir Barnes with some elbows fighting out of it now. Both these men with elbows and knees and forearms almost refusing to kick and punch each other in this matchup. Ottawa has. Amir Barnes down now. Ottawa looking at with his big, with his biggest form, trying to choke the life out of him with this headlock. The city headlocked here by Ottawa. On the Amir Barnes. And he's really actually taking good control of Amir Barnes here. And Ottawa now. Amir Barnes will fight up to his feet. Irish whipping Ottawa right out of the ring right there. And that is why. That is why Amir Barnes is scary. The strength of Amir Barnes right there. Just tossing Amir I'm tossing the Ottawa around the ring right here. Referee's count now. Starting. And Ottawa being tossed back in the ring by Amir Barnes. Amir Barnes now. Ooh, just tossing Ottawa right over his head and onto his back. Ottawa in a bad way here now. Amir Barnes. Who was really, who just a minute ago was getting the life choked out of him. Now it's fought back and a headbutt by Amir Barnes. What a headbutt. And oh my god. Half a dragon suplex. Tossing Ottawa over his head. This could be it. One. Oh, it gets two. But Ottawa somehow kicks out and pressing Amir right there with the headbutt. And Amir Barnes stayed on the offense with a big kick. Amir Barnes now has Ottawa down. Ottawa trying to get back to his feet, but Amir Barnes is striking him. Picking him up now himself. What's Amir Barnes going to do here? A suplex. Nails Ottawa with a big suplex right there. Driven him down to the mat. Ottawa down the mat. And getting his head just wrenched by Amir Barnes. You can't see him from my vantage point. Or the camera's vantage point. But that was very devastating by Amir Barnes. Amir Barnes now. Wait a second. Ottawa back to his feet. Michi Noku, driver of sorts by Ottawa, onto Amir Barnes, what a power maneuver. And now I'm picking him up for a DDT. That was a big impact in DDT by Ottawa, one, two. And Amir Barnes kicks out at two. I think it's going to take more than that to defeat the former WWE Universal Champion, the former WWE Champion. Ottawa, though, 
Wait a second, Amir Barnes with a Cobra clutch! Overhead suplex! Out to Iowa! Are you kidding me? One, two! Oh my god, it only gets two! Amir Barnes with all kinds of suplex variations here tonight. And Ottawa somehow can get out of them. Right and almost stood on his neck right there. I'm surprised that man isn't paralyzed. And Amir Barnes, oh my god, did you hear the velocity in that snap mirror? Now has his arm locked, and oh my god, trying to wrench the arm out of the, trying to wrench the, Elmore, Elmore shoulder out of the socket with this move, everybody. This is a devastating arm lock right here. This is more than an arm lock, and Ottawa's got to fly out of it, or is it, a, or, or Amir Barnes is going to break his arm. Literally, Amir Barnes might have been trying to break the arm out of Ottawa here. And you got to say, maybe that's some respect by Amir Barnes, because he's considering Ottawa a threat. Ottawa somehow has Amir Barnes placed at the top rope. These two gladiators fighting here on the third match of Fusion. And what's Ottawa got planned for Amir Barnes? Super flex onto Amir Barnes. The cover. One, two. No, oh, and how did Amir Barnes get out of that superplex? Ottawa in disbelief. Can you believe it? Ottawa can't. Ottawa really believes that superplex should have been it for Amir Barnes. We've seen that superplex finish off many of superstars of a four. Trapped in the leg and an overhead suplex by Amir Barnes. That was devastating. Will that be it? Covered by Amir Barnes. One, two. And Ottawa somehow kicks out of that T-bone suplex with the leg trap, that steak suplex. And I can't believe it, Amir Barnes now getting suplex, snap suplex by Ottawa. Ottawa somehow back to his feet. Ottawa now, this is where he's letting his cockiness get in, taunting to the fans. And he's young, he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have been doing this. Because he is now caught in that devastating goal, that devastating choke, and Amir Barnes has this choke on the Iowa. Iowa was somehow trying to fight it off and got his head on the rope. The referee said that Amir Barnes has to break it up. Oh my God! I can't believe Iowa's head touched the rope. He got lucky, I believe. And oh my God, Amir Barnes thought Iowa was up, but Iowa still somehow. And looking good in this match against Amir Barnes. If he can somehow win, but it's not looking good right now. I'm surprised he has any life in himself. I believe that might have just been lucky that he might have, his hand might have just hit the rope. And the referee might have given him a break there. Amir Barnes now, double axe handle with a back right there. Now at the top rope, everybody, if you guys listen to this match, not watch it. Amir Barnes now with a snap, and once again, driving Amir Barnes down. With and once again with this. Devastating arm maneuver on that Ottawa trying to break his arm, I believe. I've never seen a man do that kind of maneuver to somebody in wrestling ring before. Ottawa with a big slap to the midsection. That hurt. I can hear that slap. And oh, wait a second. That just pissed off a mirror Barnes. Bridging Diner Suplex. Two. Three. Oh my God. Man. What a match. What a fight. What a competition we had just seen. By Ottawa and Amir Barnes, but Amir Barnes with a frigging Tiger Suplex wins this matchup here on Fusion. Hats off to Ottawa, hats off to Amir Barnes, and you see the replays. Both men, high impact all match, never let go. Put on the gas pedal all match between both men. Amir Barnes trying to almost break the arm of Ottawa, trying to choke the life out of him. Ottawa trying to make a name for himself with a big win over Amir Barnes doesn't happen, but impresses not just me, but I have to impress all you fans. Some would say this choking like maneuver right here by Amir Barnes, a move that he has won championships with in the past, does not get him the win here tonight. He calls that the Pharaoh's Curse, everybody. Let's not forget that choke, the Pharaoh's Curse. And I think that maybe there's a little bit of blessing in the ring. Because Ottawa got his hand on the ropes as Amir Barnes tries to break the arm once again. Ottawa just, he throws a slap out there, which just, again, as Amir Barnes is pissed off now. Ottawa's recovering from that arm, almost being broken, gets nailed. Neck 
first down the mat, all the way. This huge Tiger suplex bridging by Amir Barnes. Victorious, the former Mountain Range champion. And we had just seen Al Cabrera victorious earlier tonight. When Amir Barnes once again be challenging Al Cabrera for the Mountain Range Championship somehow in the future. Or, or maybe his goals are bigger than that from here. As we move on to, well, speaking of the Mountain Range Championship, these six men are about to compete in the top rope battle royal. The winner of this match will be named the number one contender for the Mountain Range Championship. So, that seems to be the theme tonight, that Mountain Range title. A lot of those matches, a lot of former champions, a lot of the current champion even, all wrestling here. These six men looking in an over-the-top rope opportunity. A man who was victorious in the very first ever fusion match, and now currently the Eastern Tag Team Champion because of that win with Brandon Shields, is making his way down the ring right now. The shooter, Jason James, everybody! Jason James, currently the UAW Eastern Tag Team Champion, everyone. Jason James, would you, could, would you believe it? After so many years of CAW, this man made his debut, I believe, in 2009. Possibly 2008, 2010, don't, don't quote me. It's hard to remember all the facts of everybody, but Jason James, now the Tag Team Champion of the Eastern Division in UAW. And Jason James, you can see he's ecstatic. This is his first time, I believe, wearing championship gold to the ring, other than his one time as the ITF Television Champion. Jason James, ecstatic. The shooter to maybe possibly win this match. He is the smallest man, and almost always is the smallest man in every match that he competes in. Jason James. We're in the colors in AW, the yellow and black. Well, some people say that the colors in AW is also purple and black now. There's another man making his way down the ring who was not victorious when, when, at final chapter with a loss to Smokey. El Novena looking to bounce back. A big win here tonight would put him as put him as the number one contender for the UAW. Mountain Range champion against Al Cabrera. El Novena, the only uh, original superstar to ever appear on Superstars of Ka. Also has a part-time appearance there. Also a former Ska hardcore champion is El Novena. Also a former NCWL tag team champion. Shout out to my buddy Nick Gemini. As here comes the third man making his way down the ring. A man that has lost a little bit of steam lately. But don't let it confuse you because he is one of the biggest threats in the new AW locker room. He is Ossie Andy. Ossie Andy. Is also currently the new AW. Western Tag Team Champion. I'm surprised he's not wearing that belt up to the ring. I'm actually shocked him a little bit. He's not wearing that belt to the ring, but he is currently the UAW Western Tag Team Champion alongside Tasmanian Tiger Man. Nasiani has a big chance here tonight to just like Jason James, to move up into singles divisions here in, in the NAW. Austin the Western, Brian Thomas is one half of the Western Tag Team Champions. They are in their second reign as Tag Team Champions. Almost been champions for a year now. Actually, oh, within a week, we'll be champions in a year. They had a few of them for this Tag Team title. Kuma Santos and Shane Corson at final chapter 11, I mean at chapter 11, was victorious in the team of the title at chapter 12. Here comes a man who's a former new NAW, I mean here's a man who's a former NAW Intercontinental Champion who has signed a new NAW contract, Ryan Rex everybody. And if you're not familiar with Ryan Rex, he is a superstar that, has, that was an NAW original back in the year 2009, Ryan Rex. There's no stranger to gold. The former NFL champion, a former champion, a three times, a former Tornado Tag Team Champion with Sean Dynasty. Also has won the COD Champion of Champions one time. The Vivian Burst, he remained the number 32 wrestler 
of the top 50 in, in 2010. That is Ryan Rex, everybody. Ryan Rex, also a member of the new, new TNA locker room, also in fake new gen wrestling. Ryan Rex has been in all kinds of leagues. Also in Warzone wrestling, I think. I believe that's where he made his debut with Warzone wrestling. As here comes a man who I had just mentioned earlier has history with Austin Andy, a former UAW Western Tag Team Champion, also a former Eastern Tag Team Champion on two different occasions. This man's a three-time Tag Team Champion in UAW. It is Shane Corson, the Silver Apostle. The Silver Apostle Shane Corson, the leader of the Dark Carnival, which I'm not sure how many members of the Dark Carnival are left. I can tell you right now that Bonkers will always probably be a loyal servant to Shane Corson, it seems to be. And I know the Garbage Punk Kids, who we seen wrestle earlier tonight, big win for Kid Jack, oh, let's not forget. I'm very happy to be away from this man, the Silver Apostle Shane Corson. Get the six man battle They score the number one contender for the Mountain Range Championship. The winner will go on and take on Al Cabrera, I believe, at Fusion 3. Here comes a man who is making a guest appearance here tonight. A former new WWE superstar coming out with his new WWE attire. It is Cage, everybody. This man, Cage, is a former new WWE United States Champion. Cage. A lot of credit to Cage. He has gone through a lot in his career. A lot of ups, a lot of more down ups than what say, but has definitely won the respect of everybody, everybody in the locker room, every fan. A former DCO television champion, a former SmackDown tag team champion in WWE with El Hondero, a former WWE Intercontinental United States champion on one occasion each, as I've mentioned before. Cage. Now, when you now possibly the chance to win this match and be the number one contender for the new AW Mountain Range Championship. And here comes the six man, I, I mean, and, and his bell is one for the six man battle royal. As we got Elno Bano and Shane Corson locking up, Jason James and Cage, Ryan Rex and Ossie Andy, which would be an amazing matchup to see Ossie Andy and Ryan Rex one day. I'd love to see that one on one matchup. Oh, any of these guys in a situation they are, I'd love to see them all wrestling each other. We've seen them before in some of these situations. I don't know, man, with a nice job breaker on the same board. Don't forget, only one of these six men can win this matchup. Ryan Rex, also a small individual, just like Jason Gaines. Don't forget, we've seen Jason Gaines and Ryan Rex, both of them as a size does not matter. Well, unless you're asking the ladies, I can tell you that. And Ryan Rex almost tossed out by Aussie Andy, but no. And Jason Daniels fights his way back in the ring as El Noveno also does the same. None of these men want to be the first man eliminated or don't even want to be eliminated no matter if it's the first or fifth or the fourth or the second. Ryan Rex has Aussie Andy right now in a bad way. And that would have been a shocker for me if Aussie Andy would have been eliminated right away, but Aussie Andy fights his way back in the ring. This six man battle well here. Cage in a bad way. Cage, the new WWE alumni representative, always try to have one of those guest appearances here on Fusion. I love that. Last time we had Devil Goat. I always like seeing Devil Goat. I T I W T superstar in Twilight time. As well as this name is Twilight. Shout out to I W T and Twilight. It's Twilight Twilight time. It's Twilight Twilight time. As Cage. As Ozzy Andy once again in a bad way, Cage could possibly look to toss off Ozzy Andy right here. And Ozzy Andy trying to hold on. Cage trying to eliminate him, but Ozzy Andy able to hold on and does. Back in the now. And now Ozzy Andy has to toss Cage over the top rope, but Cage able to hold back on. But still in a bad way, Ozzy Andy trying to eliminate Cage now. Cage though holding on. Ozzy Andy trying to hold him over, but Cage able to get back in the ring. And that blonde hair reminds me of like Dolph Ziggler. Cage does, and that's out there. 
Uh, high school musical fan is Kate, I believe. Right job to a microphone. Like I said, Cage has gone through a lot of downs and a lot of ups, more downs than ups for me. Definitely respect Cage now, and I absolutely love Cage. A big win for Cage tonight would be a good win, would possibly even win him a contract. You know, who knows? Shane Corson fought his way back in the ring right there. And Ossiani has been, no he hasn't. Ossiani held on once again. Ossiani is like a cat with nine lives right now. Impressive. And Cage once again now on the, possibly could get eliminated. Ossiani now trying to eliminate Cage once again. Both these men really just were working on a strong match. I would say Cage Ossiani. And Jason James. Ryan Rex, Ryan Rex able to fight back in the ring. Ossiani has Shane Corson now. And there's what, crucifix like maneuver, very trying to toss him to the top rope, but Shane Corson drops down good next break. And now, wait a second, Ryan Rex wants to get in a bad way. Jason James trying to toss out Ryan Rex right now. And, oh, he does! Jason James with a big elimination on Ryan Rex, and can you believe it? Ryan Rex has been eliminated. The very first superstar eliminated in this matchup. Now, Jason James goes to Ossiani, trying to eliminate him with Shane Corson. Ossiani trying to stay in the ring, trying to fight back here. And does so. And what is, wait a second, no, Vano was able just to fight back in the ring. Sorry, everybody, I did not notice that, but although Vano was very close to being eliminated by Cage, did, but did not, was not successful in that elimination attempt. Shane Corson now placing the top rope, but back elbow by Shane Corson and Jason James. Now Jason James was also the top rope, but Jason James now holding on. And Jay Corson backs up, nails him with a huge clothesline, and Jason James has been eliminated. Four men left in this matchup. Shane Corson tosses out Ossie Andy, but no, Ossie Andy wants to get him back on. Ossie Andy, yelp back. Man, it's hard to, to, hard to really take out of this matchup, I'll tell you that. And that's why Ossie Andy is one of the top tier superstars in UNAW of the current one half of the West Coast Western Tag Team Champions for a reason is Ossie Andy. Then where those champions didn't win that fell out tonight. That was the on the maybe not had the championship with him, I don't know. As Cage in a bad way right now, Oh no, Vano trying to eliminate Cage. Not successful right there. Cage who let's not forget is a much taller superstar. A lot of people forget about forget that when they look at Cage. It reminds you of Nate Farron a little bit, not as tall as Nate Farron, but a, a taller man with the rest of the background is Cage. More of a technical background than like a big suit color on background. And big power slam by Cage. On to Elmo Vano. Austin Andy. Tossing on Shane Corson. Shane Corson seems to be skinning the cat though, and he does. Hangs on. Impressive. And I, I, that is impressive. Good for Shane Corson right there. A three time tag team champion, Shane Corson. Has some history with Aussie Andy, as I've mentioned before. Dark Carnival defeated Pub Club for the tag titles, and then Pub Club defeated Dark Carnival back for the very same tag team titles. And Shane Corson was in a bad way, but Shane Corson was able to roll back in the ring. Very resilient by Shane 
Worse than once again. Now trying to eliminate Aussie Andy right here is Cage almost like a predator in the night, just waiting for something to happen. Waiting for his opportunity and Cage. Blue Thunder Bomb by Cage. Not like the velocity we've seen earlier tonight, but that was a nice little quick little blue thunder bomb. Nice little package bomb almost right there, I'd call that. The quickness of that right there. Cage now. What's he gonna do to Aussie Andy? Pile driving Aussie Andy right down the right down to our neck first down the ring mat. Wait a second, Jim Corson now with a big back suplex on to Cage. Jane Corson. What's he got planned now? Oh, wait a second, Aussie Andy she cuts off Shane Corson. Could possibly be looking for. We've seen him do this before. He calls it the Aussie Oop. Nails it. The Aussie Oop. On to Shane Corson. Devastating move by Aussie Andy. And Aussie Andy now. What's he going to do to Cage? Has him on his shoulders. And oh my God, tosses Cage right down. And Cage can't believe it. That's been eliminated by Aussie Andy. One of these two men, Shane Corson and Aussie Andy, is going to be the number one contender for the Mountain Men's Championship. Shane Corson up with Aussie Oop. Capitalizing, though, on Aussie Andy being distracted by eliminating Cage. And Shane Corson has eliminated Aussie Andy. Can you believe it? The Silver Apostle Shane Corson eliminates Aussie Andy. And Shane Corson will now take on Al Capran for the Mountain Range Championship on Fusion Episode 3. The Silver Apostle victorious here. And I, I almost can't believe it. The former three-time tag team champion, the former OPW European champion, the Silver Apostle Shane Corson. But we have to move on here, everybody. The North American Elite Wrestling All-American title. As LaMarcus Carter making his way down the ring. He is the former All-American champion, has lost that championship in a triple threat matchup. Looking to possibly regain that championship, the All-American title, I've noticed over the North American wrestling history is one of the hardest championships to hold on to. The All-American title. As Lamarcus Carter making his way down the ring, a former All-American champion himself. Lamarcus Carter looking to become a two-time All-American champion and become the first ever would become the first ever superstar to do so. And Lamarcus Carter. As, actually, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. He actually lost lost the championship in a fail forward matchup, everybody. I want to, don't want to be uh, misquoted there. We lost him from the fifth forward matchup here. Really. As Connor James making his way down the ring. Connor James, the former North American League Wrestling Canadian Tag Team Champion. He is a former North American League Wrestling Heart and Brutality Champion on three different occasions. He's a former North American League Wrestling Maple Leaf Champion. Won the championship on Christmas Eve. Did Connor James? Connor James is looking to become the All-American champion here tonight. He's a former member of Cash Corporation with the man who's about to face off with Lamarcus Carter. Currently in the tag team group NSFW is Connor James, along with the man who's going to be challenging Nate Barron for the North American League Wrestling Heavyweight Championship later tonight. The Brick House Chris Snyder. Connor James and Chris Snyder had just lost the Canadian Tag Team Championship at Collision Course. Looking to bounce back and once again win some championships, I should say, by winning another title here in North American League Wrestling. If he does it, it would be his fourth title in North American League Wrestling. The Diabolical One, Connor James. Everybody. And would it be a Connor James match if I didn't go? It's Connor. But even though Connor is in the ring, the current All American champion making his way down to the ring, the Primal Warrior himself, Smokey, everyone, the CAW legend, the CAW icon, Smokey. And I don't give that icon status out to too many people. Smokey is an icon in the CAW world. The All American champion, Smokey. 
he knows the All-American Championship does not have good luck behind it. A championship that does not have many successful title defenses. Smokey says that tonight he's so tonight is going to be the start of something to differ for this All-American title. He plans on having a very lengthy reign with this All-American Championship. He's going to, even though there's been some very prestigious and not so prestigious people that have won the championship before in the past, he even calls him the Lester the Molester. Uh, I'm going to just say what Smokey said right there. I'm, I'm telling you what Smokey wanted me to say, that he plans on bringing prestigious, prestigious the, the, the most prestigious championship that's ever been brought. No, not discrediting Nate Fair in the current world champion or any other former All-American champion like El Novano and Marcus Carter right now. Match about to start. Triple threat match. And will we see Cash Corporation almost work together? The very first thing I want to notice right here is this match is that all three men were in black, white, or gray. Not very colorful tonight, all three men. Looking to win the All-American title, not looking to stand out. I guess the, I guess the only color they want to add in that, that, uh, to them tonight is that red, white, and blue of the All-American Championship gold and that, and that really nice blue strap. And Connor James, nice shoulder tag on the Smokey. Triple threat match for the All-American Championship. This is the fifth match of Fusion. I hope you're all still with us and enjoying the show. We've had some great matches so far. We've seen Amir Barnes defeat Ottawa in a great, great, great match. We see Kid Jack qualify for contract in the case. We will now know that Shane Morrison will take on Al Cabrera, who was also victorious earlier like in his matchup against Lariat. We know Shane Morrison will take on Al Cabrera for the Multiplayer Championship. All on Fusion Episode 3. But that's all That's all for the next Fusion. And right now, we still got Fusion Episode 2 for Big Mac. It's all very competitive. Right now, it's the threat of Marcus Carter and Smokey. Two great WDF superstars, Connor James, who behind the scenes, He's throwing it out here in, in, on the North American League Wrestling shows. He said it before that he that he believes that he is WEDF because he works so hard in WEDF. Nice reverse DDT to by Smokey on the Marcus Carter for Connor James. Wait a second, Connor James with a nice, almost like an Irish whip and then a rebound, or, or I don't even know what to call it. He had a nice backbreaker though. 55 minutes and start stuttering a little bit. It's a little scary, everyone. <laughs> and don't forget, when's the, when's the last time we did talk commentary? It's been like a month out in WDF, I think maybe one time. Smokey, look for a suplex in the Marcus Carter instead goes for a, just throws him front forward with a cup buster. Connor James now trying to capitalize right here, the diabolical one, Connor James. Nice scoop slam, almost throwing Smokey halfway across the ring. And I gotta mention, Cash Corporation has not really worked together as a team at all, let alone they've really seem to have issues with each other. And you gotta think maybe when Marcus Carter feels like Connor James might let them high and dry. Or maybe Connor James might use him for that Maple Leaf Championship. As soon as he was Maple Leaf Champion, that Cash Corporation bond no longer was there. So who knows what Marcus Carter is feeling. Connor James looking to become the first man to capture both the Maple Leaf and the All-American Champion. He is the very first man to capture both the Maple Leaf and the Canadian Tag Team Champions, winning both Canadian branded championships in North American League Wrestling. Also a three-time Brutality Champion, ties for the most reigns. As Smokey delivers a huge side effect on Marcus Carter right there. And Connor James now trying to capitalize. Connor James choking Smokey out, but Smokey out raking the eyes out of and that's why I call Connor James the diabolical one. He'll use all his strength to put him into that maneuver right there. And Smokey. What's he got planned for Marcus Carter as he wait a second, tosses him to the outside of the ring. Smokey in the big move right there, little big springboard drop set. And Connor James, two back elbows, another big back elbow. And oh, it's getting tossed into the arena. So Marcus Carter on the Connor James right there. And these two men rolling for the All American Championship on the outside of the ring right now. The championship cannot be won on the outside of the ring. So these men are just trying to inflict pain onto each other. These men are just trying to 
hurt and and really just abolish each other. Demolish each other. And oh my god, Connor James takes the breath out of me all losing speeches with that big maneuver and a smoky is tossing the ring steps. And these three men still on the outside of the ring is brawling. All-American Championship, Connor James back in the ring now with a championship. The only place with a championship can be won. Marcus Carter now, Irish whipping Smokey. All three men back in the ring here. The All-American Championship, like I mentioned, is on the line. Smokey has made plans to win and be a long reign. Big spinning backhand by Connor James. Will this be it? Smokey down, took a big blow right there. Down to lose a four on the elbow. Well, Marcus Carter now picking up Connor James. As the fans are really into this matchup, Connor James delivers a big back suplex on the well, Marcus Carter right there. Smokey with that giant finishing maneuver. Smokey's looking for the cover on Connor James. One, the two, a three. Connor James just pinned Smokey has retained the All-American Championship here on Fusion. And that match was a brawl, almost left me speechless after the match. But Smokey did retain. Smokey, the All-American Champion, still a big title defense over a former Maple Leaf Champion, a former All-American Champion. Smokey doing big things here in North American Elite Wrestling. The All-American Champion, Smokey, victorious here tonight. Big win for Smokey. To pins Connor James here in this triple threat matchup. Pins a former Maple Leaf Champion. Pins a former Tag Team Champion. Smokey on a roll. Smokey, the All-American Champion still as we have to move on. The following is scheduled for one fall. And is for the As we're about to have a championship, championship matchup between the current champion, Divas Cross, and the challenger, Chantel Queen. Chantel Queen is the lady that some people say has Rachel Cross's number as Chantel Queen makes her way down in the ring right now. Chantel Queen has defeated Rachel Qu Cross on two or three different occasions. My memory does not serve me right. Well, Rachel Cross does not have a victory over 
over Chantel Queen at all. So this, this could be Rachel Cross's biggest challenge to date. Chantel Queen, not a former Divas champion, but one of the most popular Divas here in the Divas division of the North American Elite Wrestling Divas locker room. And these Divas are superstars. Chantel Queen, very well. We very well could be looking at the very next Divas champion right now in Chantel Queen. Chantel Queen. And the athleticism of a diva of her size, and that is no insult, that is a compliment. Chantel Queen, the most popular lady, I would say, almost on this Divas roster. When she comes out, you can hear the fans absolutely love Chantel Queen. And Chantel, Chantel Queen, the challenger. Chantel Queen, given this opportunity because of her track history with Rachel Cross, who's on the left, the Divas champion. Lilith on the right, the Vixful Vengeance of North American Wrestling, the Divas tag team. Lilith, also a former Divas champion. Rachel Cross, a Divas champion on two different occasions. Of the five Divas championship reigns of the Divas title, these ladies hold claim to three of those reigns. And Chantel Queen is looking to make it number six here tonight. Let's not forget, actually, Lilith is the one who defeated Rachel Cross, and Rachel Cross is the one who defeated Lilith for that Divas championship. The, D the Divas division is one of the hard fought, one of the hard hitting, one of the most brutal divisions here in the North American League Wrestling locker room. As Chantel Queen and Lilith. These ladies not liked by the fans here. This is only a singles matchup. Lilith will be in Chantel Queen's, and will be in Lilith Cross's corner. Rachel Cross's corner. I am. Let the ring announcer talk. Introducing the challenger from Northridge, California, the Queen, Shane. And introducing the champion from Hollywood, California, she is the Evan. Marie. And as I've mentioned before, I'm the ring announcer do the talking. He'll tell you who these people are. <laughs> the current Divas champion, Rachel Cross, the red and black. And the lady in black and purple is Chantel Queen, the challenger. The nameless referee, given the given the the hard task of being the referee here in this matchup, giving the referee the Todd a break after five long matches in a row. Divas championship match on the line. Chantel Queen, the challenger. Rachel Cross, a match we have seen a few times in North American Elite Wrestling, has meant more than has ever has it means more now than it ever has because the Divas championship is on the line. Well, we get a clean break here between these ladies and Chantel Queen as we do, surprisingly, as Chantel Queen and now just using her strength and power against Rachel Cross, one of the more power, one, one, the most powerful lady on the Divas division, you gotta say, Chantel Queen, I would say. Track history shows Chantel Queen. Chantel Queen, oh, just nailed a kick by Roundhouse by Rachel Cross, but. Chantel Queen stays on her feet and a big knee by Chantel Queen and a snap near Rachel Cross is down. And the big school vengeance are going to have their hands full here trying to make sure Rachel Cross somehow as right there Lilith already distracting Chantel Queen. I don't know if the referee should even be allowing Lilith to be at ringside because that's her only purpose of being here I believe is to give Rachel Cross some kind of advantage. Chantel Queen, as we've seen in the past, has Rachel Cross's number. A small, small knee injury kept Chantel Queen out for a few months of North American Elite Wrestling action. She is back. Rachel Cross is now the Divas Champion and Chantel Queen believes that she deserves to be the Divas Champion, or deserves a shot. The executive and the higher up North American Elite Wrestling has agreed. This Divas Championship match up here on Fusion Episode 2, the sixth match. Fans are excited. I'm just as excited. The Divas Championship, two of the hardest hitting Divas here in the North American Elite Wrestling locker room. Chantel Queen having a chance to possibly to pop the crowd like no other if she could win this Divas Championship match here tonight. The Divas title also one of those very hard championships to hold on to. As I mentioned, it's like the All-American Championship has had so many, uh, five, five title, title changes in less than a year, which I consider a lot, everybody. It's a, that, 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 it, it's a traveling championship, it's a hard championship to hold, a hard hitting division to be in. And these Divas prove it every time they come out here tonight. And what? And wow, Rachel Cross with a suplex holds on to the arm and to a arm bar, but Chantel's leg was in the rope. Rachel Cross, the Divas champion, victorious in her last match over the 
and we also know that Willis and Rachel Cross, no matter the outcome of this matchup, will meet Denise Parkinson and Alexandria Marie inside a steel cage at Cage in and a tornado tag team steel cage match. Let's not forget at Fusion 1 when the when the tag team of Rachel Cross and Lilith blindsided the match, blindsided those two before the match even started. At, at, at Cage Gym, we'll get the outcome there. And here on Volume 2 of Fusion, Rachel Cross and Chantel Queen fighting. Rachel Cross looking for a huge jumping DDT nails on the Chantel Queen. This could be it. One, two, and Chantel Queen kicks out at two, and Rachel Cross can't believe it. This is for the Divas Championship, as I've mentioned already. Rachel Cross now. No. She slugs Chantel Queen. Stomps on her chest. Chantel Queen down, but gets picked up by Rachel Cross. Rachel Cross now. Irish whips her into the turnbuckle. And what's she going to do here? P looking for a slice bread. Cutter nails it. Big move by Rachel Cross, two! They no! Chantel Cross kicked out at two once again. Rachel Cross can't believe the slice bread cutter wasn't enough. And shades of Brian Kendrick right there with that slice bread cutter number two. And big hurricane runner right now by Rachel Cross taking down Chantel Queen. And a little bit more confidence in and the red and red hood Rachel Cross against Chantel Queen as compared to her last previous matches. Now she's the Divas Champion, I believe. And has been really coming to her own as the Divas Champion. Has Rachel Cross. Rachel Cross now looking for that giant jumping GDT once again. She was able to stop Chantel Queen's flurry right there with that jumping DDT. A signature of Rachel Cross is the big bad wolf. Two. Dang, oh, only gets two once again. Can you believe it? Only gets two. And looking for now a jumpy slice spread cover. Someone call it a side DDT. Rachel Cross, big impact once again. This time, that's enough to beat Chantel Queen. And you gotta say, even though Chantel Queen Give it her all, Rachel Cross really took a fight to Chantel Queen like she never had before. High impact, all matchup, Rachel Cross, the Divas Champion, puts down Chantel Queen with little help from Lilith. But at the end of the day, Rachel Cross defeats Chantel Queen almost on her own accord. And that is her first singles win against Chantel Queen. Which again, some would say this is the upset because Chantel Queen has had Rachel Cross's number until now. Chantel Queen, I gotta say, I, she's gonna be heartbroken over this one, but Rachel Cross was the better lady here tonight. And some might argue, well, it's outside interference, but that was only once, and that was a few minutes ago. Into the, that, was, that was the opening part of this matchup. I, the referee didn't do anything about it, so why, so why should we have to say anything about it? Rachel Cross defeats Chantel Queen. Here is your winner, and still... And I gotta say, big win for Marie. Rachel Cross here. Still a Divas champion. Her and Lilith are gonna be taking on Denise Parkinson and Alexandria Marie inside a steel cage at Cage Gen. That will be their next matchup, and that will be the next event. Rachel Cross victorious over Chantel Queen, still the Divas champion here tonight. Rachel Cross, as we have to move on here, Mike Ballander, the challenger for I Mike Ballander, the champion, Johnny D, the challenger, the brutality championship is on the line here tonight. As Mike Ballander makes his way down the ring, the current brutality champion of the world, Mike Ballander. He believes himself as a Minnesota Viking, and that is not the football Minnesota Viking. He believes that he is a Viking straight from Minnesota, straight in his roots. This man has not always been completely there in the head, but he's loving this Viking thing now. He used to be a cowboy for a short while, and he also was a face mask wearing business dude. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> goes on in Mike Ballander's head, but the man is a proven threat in North American League Wrestling, also a brutality champion currently. As here comes a man who's about to make his way down the ring, a monster hunter of some sort. Maybe he'll call himself a Viking hunter. As 
Johnny D making his way down the ring, the challenger for the Brutality Championship. Johnny D, everybody. Johnny D, the former Brutality Champion on two different occasions. Mike Bounder on the very last edition of, was it Fusion or was it Collision Course? On either event, Mike Dallander walked away as the Brutality Champion. as Lariat making his way down the ring. I've got Lariat as Johnny D making his way down the ring as we're an hour and 50 minutes into a show. Single man show gets a little hard, but Mike Ballander, Johnny D, the match is underway. This is for the Brutality Championship. No disqualification rules if you wanna go like that. These two men, we've heard that these two men are not gonna use weapons here tonight and are gonna have a singles matchup. That's crazy in a Brutality Championship matchup. Let's see if they actually go with that. I mean, they said they want to show up. They, they want to show up. They can do without Brutality. Like, like they said, Johnny D was in the very first ever Maple Leaf Champion match, Maple Leaf Championship match that well, almost was the Maple Leaf Champion. Alcubierre was victorious in that situation. Mike Ballander on two different tournaments for the All American title and the United States Tag Title team in the semifinals. Almost was a new, was almost the first champion two different times. Only two count by Johnny D right there to Mike Ballander. I don't even know what took Mike Ballander down, but almost took him, took him out for the whole three. As Mike Ballander now stomping away, going to the top rope, but Johnny D stopping Mike Ballander here. And now with a Boston Crab, Johnny D is not from Boston. I know that for a fact. But nailing a Boston Crab, Mike Ballander is able to reverse it. That's probably why it didn't work so well, because he's not from Boston. Trust me, Johnny D doesn't have a Boston accent and isn't Boston. Speaking of Boston, anyone watch Survivor? I love Boston Rob. Survivor's a, good, Survivor's a good show. I like Survivor. Mike Ballander, belly to back suplex on the Johnny D. Don't forget, we know that the winner of this matchup will be challenged by Remy. The Memphis, the Memphis, the Memphis, what is it, the Memphis, I can't remember, I can't remember the team name right now, but he is a mascot from Memphis Wrestling. Remy, everybody, is going to challenge the winner of this matchup at Cajun on the kickoff. So the winner of this match has a lot to look forward to because they're going to be taking on Ribby. Yes, Ribby, everybody. What, a, a certain fan favorite, Ribby, making a guest appearance. Says that he'll come wrestle for the Brutality Championship against one of those men, the winner of this matchup. So the winner of this matchup already knows we'll be taking on Ribby. Mike Ballander taking Johnny D's head. And both these men not using any weapons so far like they have obliged to, like they said they wouldn't. And Mike Ballander now, Sambo suplex, nailing that big move. You would call that a spinning year and now yeah, I call that a Sambo. Whatever you want to call it, it hurts Johnny D. Mike Ballander, the current Brutality Champion. The 26th Brutality Champion. Johnny D, the two-time Brutality Champion, if he wins here tonight, would tie the record with Connor James and another superstar with, and Isaacoff, I'll just say it, Isaacoff. Isaac Goff is a two-time Brutality Champion, no longer here with North American League Wrestling. He won the Brutality Championship three times though, which he currently wanted to do. And, wow, two or three giant jumping knees by Johnny D, a spinning back shit, bed packing up. Both these men almost going to MMA right now with spinning back hands, spinning back fists. Johnny D though with a palm thrust. Johnny, Mike Ballander with an overhand boxing thrust throw. Johnny D able to reverse whatever Ballander had planned with his head. Big jab by Johnny D. Johnny D now abdominal stretching Mike Ballander. A big abdominal stretch right now. And oh, both men fall down. This match actually taking a little bit of wear and tear, maybe possibly tripping out of that move. Mike Ballander even even way gets out of it. And both these men still striking each other, almost like an MMA match, but it's a definitely a wrestling match. Big kick by Johnny D. Catches Valander in the face right there. Almost like a Uranagi, a standing Uranagi. And now a Boston Crab once again by Johnny D. Been working on that back. All matchup of Mike Valander. Valander somehow kicks out of it once again. Oh, two spinning back fists, but Johnny D ducks both of them. Valander nails a nice jab. Johnny D, though, with a big jab of his own. Goes behind Mike Valander. No, what's he doing here? And now, oh my god, a cross face by Johnny D onto Mike Valander. We know that Johnny D is a submission expert also. He does all kinds of wrestling moves, just Johnny D. The man, if you call him an expertise, you call him a submission expertise, you call him a high-flying expertise, you call him anything but powerhouse expertise. But he tries to do powerhouse maneuvers. 
Johnny D now is showing some Muay Thai and some MMA once again. Two knees and then a giant uppercut. No rope breaks in the brutality championship matchup. Three, Johnny D with a MMA-like combination has just won back the brutality championship. In his third reign now, his brutality champion is Johnny D. But we have to move on here to the North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship matchup. What we've all came here for, everyone. The main event. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. And is for the NWO Championship. The North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship on the line. This is what we're all here for, everybody. The Brick House, Chris Snyder challenging Nate Farron, the champion. And don't forget, last time we had seen Nate Farron use some questionable tactics somewhat to defeat Ozzy Andy in that matchup. As Chris Snyder making his way down the ring, the Brick House, the former North American League Wrestling Canadian Tag Team Champion is Chris Snyder has the biggest opportunity of his lifetime, his very first ever heavyweight championship matchup in CAW. As the powerhouse Chris Snyder is letting you know, showing it off, look how this man is built. The brick house is built just like a brick house. He is what a world heavyweight champion looks like. And after tonight, very well could be the world heavyweight champion. Him and Nate Farron are former members of NSFW. This match has been months in the making. Both men have had their own success away from each other since forming their alliance. Since then, Chris Snyder had turned on Nate Farron. The fans have adopted Nate Farron as their own. Chris Snyder had, d d does not like the fans. He actually, if there's one thing he doesn't like in wrestling, it's the fans, he's told me. That's the worst part of wrestling is the fans. Chris Snyder believes. Chris Snyder, he just wants the fortune and the fame. Chris Snyder... The Brick House does not sit on his day all, does not sit at home all day playing video games on his couch like he says everyone else does. Chris Snyder is a top tier athlete and after tonight is going to be the North American Weight Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. But I'm sure his former friend, his former partner, Nate Farron, will have something to say about that. And Nate Farron, who I mentioned before, used some questionable tactics, didn't cheat or anything to defeat Aussie Andy, but some wouldn't say that's exactly the what Nate Farron stood for and what we thought Nate Farron was trying to stand for. Either way, Nate Farron has a chance to really prove himself different again against Chris Snyder, and I believe he will, because Chris, because Nate Farron is our world heavyweight champion. He is the man that we're all behind, and Nate Farron has really brought some prestige to this North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. as Nate Farron preparing to make his way down the ring right now. Nate Farron, the champion, won the championship at Rebellion in Liverpool, England, everybody. Nate Farron defeated Joe Omega and Biff Andreas in a triple threat matchup, and Nate Farron has been World Heavyweight Champion ever since. Nate Farron coming down the ring right now has retained that championship against the likes of Monster, Messiah, and Butch Simpson. I guess also the fear, and Aussie, Andy, Nate Farron. And as you can see, the fans, they're not as behind as Nate. And that kind of actually surprises me. The fans, not sure, not, not, don't have that booming, that booming roar behind them that they had for Nate Farron previously. Nate Farron going to be challenging Chris Snyder for the North American League Wrestling Heavyweight Championship either way. And this is our main event here tonight. And Nate Farron, yes, as you can see, now, now covered in gold is the North American League Wrestling Heavyweight Championship, a new improved North American League Wrestling Heavyweight title. The only gold championship now in North American League Wrestling. So now you can say that Nate Farron is the only holder of gold in North American League Wrestling. And he, but no matter what, he is the top dog. He is the North American League Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, and he is showing it off. Nate Farron, the champion. These two men know each other very well, and I'm surprised the fans aren't behind Nate Farron like I thought they would be for this matchup, as Nate Farron holding up that North American League Wrestling Heavyweight Championship high and proud. 
Nate Farron is the champion. Chris Snyder is the challenger. This is for the North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. Introducing the challenger from Birmingham, Alabama, weighing in at 305 pounds, Chris Snyder. And introducing the champion from New York, weighing in at 300 pounds, he is the Nate. Nate Farron is coming in here tonight, weighing in 300 pounds. Might have put on a little bit extra weight, I think. I think he usually stands at 293, 287. Maybe he wanted to put a little bit extra weight against Chris Snyder for this heavyweight championship matchup. And the nameless referee once again called to action for the last three matches of the show. Brutality Championship is on the line. Here we go. The bell is about to ring and it's rung. The match that everyone's been waiting for. Nate Ferry, Chris Snyder. This is for the North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship of the World. And Chris Snyder with a big backbreaker to Nate Ferry. And that's Nate Ferry was able to suplex him to start off this matchup. Chris Snyder now has the offense going. Nate Ferry started this match off good, but now Chris Snyder. Big clubbing bro. Oh my god, the shots by Nate Farron and He's hitting him hard, and Nate Farron, Irish whip, Nate Farron, oh my god, what a clothesline, this hard-hitting matchup. And the way these guys are going, this isn't going to last long, whipping him down the ring, man, Nate Farron going for a cover. One, and Chris Snyder kicks out at one. And I don't think this match is going to last long the way that these two guys are hitting each other, because how long could a match go like this? Oh my god, driving Nate Farron down, impact first, Chris Snyder. Doing it again to Nate Farron. That's twice Nate Farron's goal has been driven down the mat. Nate Farron up to his feet, belly to belly. Belly to belly, suplex over his throw. Nate Farron, Chris Snyder rolls out of the ring. And wait a second, I don't know why the referee is getting on. The referee was telling Chris, Nate Farron not to leave the ring, which gave Chris Snyder time, which I think was a little bit of nonsense. Chris Snyder now the backbreaker. The referee actually might have cost Nate Farron there. Nameless referee. You just did a bad job. Chris Snyder now walking the rope. Shades of the Undertaker right here. What's he going to do to Nate Farron? Yes, a big shot to the back. Oh my god, it's like a highlight reel in this matchup between these two superstars. These two hard-hitting former friends. Turn enemies, turn rivals, turn bitter enemies here. And the fans now booing Chris Snyder. This is not what they want to see. And Chris Snyder drove Nate Farron's head down the ring mat once again. Nate Farron though tosses Chris Snyder over his head once again. Snyder showing off, and Farron showing off his strength against Snyder. Nate Farron, the world heavyweight champion here. Delivering some giant knees to the chest and midsection of Chris Snyder. This is for his heavyweight championship and he knows it. Uppercut by Nate Farron. Nate Farron now trying to get the fans behind him it looks like. Nate Farron. Two shots to Snyder, and Snyder drops down to a knee and just being driven down by his head to the ring mat area. And oh my god, Snyder caught the kick, a fair nail, the clothesline of his own. Chris Snyder now. Chris Snyder, wait a second. Is he gonna be taking Nate Farron's own finishing maneuver? The choke slam by Nate, by Chris Snyder on Nate Farron. That disrespect by Snyder shown. Snyder has Farron right where he wants and he believes. Picking him up now for a huge suplex after nailing his own maneuver, the choke slam. Chris Snyder has Nate Farron in a bad way here. This very well could be it, everybody. Chris Snyder, what's he got planned? Chris Snyder. And clotheslining Nate Farron over the top rope in this heavyweight championship match. What's Chris Snyder gonna do here? Chris Snyder, going for broke, oh my god, jumping on that top rope with a flat jump, nailing Nate Farron, the heavyweight championship is on the line. And I agree fans, yes, this is awesome. Chris Snyder actually seems to have a little bit of fan support, he even, he even, even seems to embrace it a little bit. What a match here. Chris Snyder tosses Nate Farron back in the ring. His heavyweight championship reign is highly in jeopardy. 
Chris Snyder can walk away as a heavyweight champion of the world very well here soon. Snyder stomping on Farron. Farron get up to his feet. Farron with a big forearm of his own though. Nate Farron trying to fight back against Chris Snyder, but Nate Farron can't be in a good way. Oh, nailing his head off the turnbuckle now, Nate Farron. Oh my God. Just stomping away now. Nate Farron, yes, he's trying to choke the life out of Snyder. And the fans are starting to boo Nate Farron. What? And I can hear some fans are starting to boo Nate Farron. Nate Farron though. Oh my God. Looking for like a variation of a tombstone. Snyder tries fighting out of it, but Farron lands him on his back still. Nice impacting maneuver, huge. Only gets two though. Snyder able to fight out of that tombstone. And I think that Nate Farron was looking for a cradle tombstone pile driver. A move that you don't see too often here in wrestling, but I believe that's what Nate Farron was going for. Nate Farron now could be looking for the choke slam here. Nate Farron got nailed with it earlier in this match. Nate Farron with a choke slam on the Snyder. Nate Farron with the choke slam. This could very well be it. Snyder's down one, two. Then Tris Snyder kicks out and Nate Farron can't believe it. He's even on the referee's tape on the count three. And as you can see, the crowd cannot believe it. Farron, big back, big back, big back breaker to Chris Snyder. Chris Snyder though, still on his feet somehow. Nate Farron almost in disbelief. And Nate Farron rolls up to the ring. Snyder will not give him a breather. Oh, wait a second. Might have been drawing Snyder in though. Big back suplex to Snyder on the outside of the ring. As soon as he got the outside, Nate Farron got his hands on him. And now these men blowing the outside of the ring. Nate Farron. Chris Snyder on the outside of the ring. And Nate Farron picking up Snyder. Big knee to the midsection. Oh, kicking him on the face not once, but twice, oh. Nate Farron. <laughs> what a match here. What a main event of Fusion Episode 2. Six. And oh my god, Snyder tosses Farron out to the, uh, to the outside. Seven. Snyder. And Farron throws him back in the ring. Farron now. Wait, Farron, referee's coming at nine. Nate Farron's walking away and I can't believe it. Chris Snyder wins but doesn't win the championship. Good fight, good night.